Coming up today on That LTD Life, I'm gonna be testing out AimFox. This is a new LinkedIn outreach tool available for a lifetime deal over at AppSumo. Pricing starts at just 59 bucks and you can stack more than one plan if you like. Go all the way up to over $2,000 for this tool. What the heck are you gonna get for that? Like legitimately, I think $2,000 is the highest end AppSumo deal I have seen in a very long time. They've got a new form of pricing table here. I haven't seen this on many other deals before. Maybe just remember seeing it one or two other times, but essentially we're gonna get all of the same features regardless of what plan we choose. It's just based on limits. So if you are a solo user looking to connect up a single LinkedIn account, 59 bucks is going to be all you need. However, if you want more than that, you can go all the way up to 200 accounts on individual workspaces so you could serve a heck of a lot of clients. Now I'm gonna go through the entire tool and show you how every single feature works. And if you like this tool, you can grab it with my link in the description, but you should know that this is not a sponsored video. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion as we go through things. I'll mention things I like and things that I don't. Overall, I want you to trust this channel so you can come back here for all of your AppSumo recommendations. And eventually I'm sure you'll use that link at least once. Thanks to everybody who's already been doing that. And now let's get into AimFox. All right, so here is my account. I just created it. We're literally gonna be trying it out together for the very first time. Now this tool is going to integrate with your LinkedIn, help you do some prospecting, grow your reach on LinkedIn so you can have a larger network and hopefully even close some deals. So I think the first thing I need to do is actually connect up my LinkedIn account. So I'm gonna click this button right here to get started. And it says connect a LinkedIn account to create a campaign. I'll hit add account. And now I have two options. I could either log into my LinkedIn account and I can set a proxy location here. This is something they added very, very quickly after the AppSumo deal launched, where we can choose which country our proxy is located in. If you're new to this whole LinkedIn outreach thing, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that when you're doing more automated tasks on LinkedIn, they might flag your account and you could even end up getting it suspended if you're not careful. Now, I really appreciate the fact that AimFox creates a dedicated IP address for each LinkedIn account, and you can even set the region for which it is going to be placed in. That's what we were just looking at. Every single plan includes this feature. I can go backwards to show you it's on tier one as well. So that is a really, really cool thing because if you're doing this on just some random VPS, it could possibly get you in trouble. All right, so I could log in this way by just filling out my username, password, and setting up my proxy location, but there's also a Chrome extension and I wanna try that out. So I'm gonna click this button here to install the Chrome extension and get going. I'll hit add to Chrome, add the extension, and I am going to pin the extension right here so you can see it in my menu bar. All right, so now that that is all set up, I'll try to reload this. Actually, I didn't have to. It noticed that the Chrome extension was installed and I can just click here to go ahead and connect. It says fail to connect with the AimFox Chrome extension, probably because I need to log into that. All right, yep, that's the, the ticket. So I clicked on the extension and now it gives me the prompt to log into LinkedIn, which I've not done so inside of Chrome. Safari is my usual browser, so Chrome doesn't have any of my logins. Let me get straightened away. All right, here we go. I am logging into LinkedIn. Need to do the whole uh, two-factor thing with the phone code. All right, I got the phone code. Let's go ahead and submit this. All right, now I'm logged in. Let's go back over to AimFox and connect up the account. So I'll try this one more time, connect via Chrome extension. And here we go, it picks up my account right away. I'll choose add account. All right, so what we do in AimFox is create campaigns. And by the way, just quick sidebar, the name AimFox gives me nostalgia back to the days of 2017 when literally every SaaS that came out had Fox in the name. What does the Fox say? Missed those days. For now, let's head over and create a campaign. We can do five different types of campaigns right now, and then there's a six that's coming soon. So we've got search campaigns, and it says search LinkedIn for your audience and automatically engage with them. So this is just to grow your network. We've got a post campaign, which will send connection requests to all people that have engaged with a LinkedIn post. So that is pretty cool. So if you post some content and you wanna gauge some interest or you have like a lead magnet follow-up, you can you know, do one of those annoying marketer messages that says like comment fire to get the PDF or something like that. All right, then we have event campaigns. By the way, I'm not making fun of these people. I'm sure it does work. There's enough people doing it, but it's still kind of funny, right? All right, we have event campaigns where you send a connection or message requests to people attending a specific LinkedIn event. That feels like it could verge a little bit on spam if it's not your event and you just get invited to it, but we'll have to see how that works. 
We've got a group campaign, which allows us to send connection requests to people that are in a specific group, also treading on thin water there. And we have, I don't know why, but for me, I feel better about just random search campaigns and doing outreach rather than finding an existing group and then trying to scrape all the users. That feels more aggressive. Finally, we have list campaigns where we import a list of LinkedIn usernames or emails and use that as the basis for our campaign. That probably feels, uh, assuming you get that list more organically, like they signed up on your website, that feels like probably the most kind of least spammy method of a campaign. Cold outreach is a very tricky thing to navigate. I know it's important to many businesses, but you gotta keep in mind the end user and how they're gonna react to it. So I don't really like the spray and pray approach. I'd rather have a more targeted type of cold outreach. I think that is the way to go. So as you're doing these things, just use a little bit of caution. Try not to just hit as many users as possible. So let's start off with a search campaign. I'm gonna click on this, go to the next screen, and now I can go ahead and set up my campaign. I'll give it a name. All right, so for this campaign, I wanna target people who own SaaS products. I wanna reach out to them. Maybe I can get them to hire me to make a video for their tool. So I'm gonna do this on my account right here, the only one I've connected up. But if you were running this for multiple accounts, you'd have a drop down here where you could choose the correct account. For the outreach type, you can choose between a connection and an in-mail, which is LinkedIn's premium messaging. So you don't actually have to be connected to them in order to message them. And then finally, under targets, we can set our audience size here. It can be a maximum of 1,000. I'm gonna leave it set to the default of 250. I'll go ahead and create this campaign. And now I need to set up the targeting. The targeting is who I'm going to be trying to connect with. Now, if you're not sure where to begin with your targeting, look at the profile of someone you'd like to reach out to. So this is Nathan Berry. He is the CEO at Kit, AKA ConvertKit. I'm gonna look for clues on his profile that might help me target other similar people that maybe have a product kind of like ConvertKit, but maybe not quite that prestigious. So notice that Nathan is a founder and CEO. That's a pretty common title when someone creates their very own SaaS. So that's probably the type of person I'm looking for. So back in Aimfox, I can choose my keyword type to be title, and then I'll enter in the keyword here, founder and CEO, and press enter. All right, now I've got some results, but there's too many. I've got 655,000 results. So I need to filter things down a little bit more. I can do so based on location. So let's say I only wanted to work with people in the United States. I can check this box right here. And then I could further filter it if I wanted to add additional countries, like maybe I'm okay with England as well. I really like that the tool was smart enough to give me options that I had already chosen in the past, even though I've never used AIMFOX. So it was focused around United States, Minneapolis, greater area where I'm located. I didn't need to start searching right from countries that start with A. All right, when I add England, my total goes up to 275K. I'm actually gonna narrow this down a little bit more by taking off England. I'm only at 228K. We obviously have some trimming to do here, but we're getting a lot more focused of an audience. Under industries, I searched for software and found this category here, software development. My list is down to under 14K. I could choose to target a specific company if I want to, but for right now, I'm gonna leave that open since I'm trying to find newer founders. There's this option here for followers of, and I love this because if you're following very similar people, you probably have similar interests, or at least you might know some people in common. So this can be a great way to start a conversation like, hey, I know you like so-and-so, or hey, I know you know so-and-so. All right, so I entered in Dave Roganmoser here, who is the founder at Jasper, a product that I reviewed on this channel several years ago before ChatGPT was even a thing. Now, with this as part of my filter, my audience is down to only 77. I could probably continue from here. It might actually be too specific, but I'm okay with that. Now, I wanna be clear that you don't need to get your audience super, super targeted. It's going to stop at whatever cap you give it, but the more specific it is, the you know kind of more focused your outreach will be, and it'll generally be more effective that way. Other targeting options include schools, skill sets, you know how you can recommend skills on LinkedIn and their profile language. I probably should set this up to be English because I don't wanna be reaching out to people in the wrong language, but looks like we didn't lose anyone here. All right, so I'm gonna to continue to the next step down here. I wanna point out that I really like AIMFOX's interface. It's very smooth and professional for an AppSumo deal. It's one of the better cold outreach tools that I've seen, at least in terms of the user experience. There's very clear guidance on how many steps I'm going through. I've done the targeting, now I'm building out the audience. 
Uh, I'll be building out the flows, schedule, and review next. So very, very informative. All right, so on this audience screen, what I can do is just review everybody that's going to be receiving my campaign. Notice that I am well under the 250 limit. I only have 77 in my list. But if I see anybody that doesn't look like a good fit, like, I don't know, this person here doesn't have a profile picture. Maybe I don't wanna send messages to people without profile pictures. Well, I can choose this one and then just go up to the top and remove them from my audience. There's also the option to export this audience here as well. So if I click this, it will export the file to a CSV and I can import it into another tool. All right, I removed one more person. I'm gonna grab a couple more here that don't have profile photos. I'm just looking to see if anybody is not at all involved in software, I probably don't wanna message them. All right, so my audience is looking pretty good. Let's move to the next step. Now we're on the flows step and here it says connect flow. Send your targets a connection request with an optional connection note and follow up message. So connect flow A to 72 people because I reduced my list a little bit. And here is the flow. First of all, it's going to automatically translate the message into the recipient's language. Now, remember, I filtered out everybody who wasn't in English, but if I didn't do that, I'd have some automatic translation. That's pretty nice. Next, it's gonna do an automatic connection request. So it's gonna send the request to my target and this step is always active. We can't turn this off. The next step is a note. Now you do need LinkedIn Premium to add a note to your connection request. I do not have that, so I will not be sending it. Then finally, it will start a message sequence, which is basically an automated follow-up sequence to my leads after they accept the connection request, and I can add that message right here. So I wanna get started by creating a template. The template will be used for the message, and I'll give this a name. All right, so I've got my follow-up message here. It just says, hi, first name. I'm using their little placeholders here, their tokens. And then it says, uh, I'm creating training videos for SaaS products and I noticed you're a developer. Would you be open to having a chat about your onboarding needs? And I'm gonna go ahead and add this as my template. And this message will go out and I can set a delay on this if I like. Let's say it's gonna go out one day and two hours after we connect. So it's not instantaneous and doesn't give away that I'm totally a bot. Now there is an AI enhance button down here. So let's find out what happens if I click on this. It says, hey Matt, I see you're doing great work at Pogeo. I'm Dave and I've created training videos for SaaSes. Uh, can we chat about enhancing your user onboarding? I'd love to connect. Definitely a more friendly message than mine. So you can kind of toggle through some sample contacts here and see what the end result would be. So this one looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks like they're from Angler AI, which I'm not familiar with that product, but sounds like a software tool. All right, all of these messages look pretty good. I'm ready to move on to the next step. Now, before I do that, I wanna point out that I could create a split test here. So this is my connection flow A, but if I go back up to the top, I could duplicate this flow and then modify it. So uh, a good, good place is always to duplicate and then modify one thing. So maybe instead of sending one message, I can maybe send two messages on the second flow to see how that changed my conversion rate. And by the way, if you want to get more specific with your A-B test, you can give each one a different name to make it easier to identify what the change was. And if you decide you don't want to do the test like I'm about to do, you can delete it. I could continue to add additional follow-up messages here as well. I'm just going to stick with the one for now. There is the option for in-mail optimization. What this is going to do is send a free in-mail to open accounts instead of a connection request. It says this step never uses your paid in-mail. So that's on by default. I'm going to leave it on. It's probably going to get a lot better reaction than uh, the other method of just, you know, not sending an in-mail. So I just learned that if you have this in-mail optimization on, you actually have to create a new message for it. It's not going to just use that same connection request message. So what I could do here is create a new template and it's going to look very similar to what we saw in the other template selection. But you know what I'm going to do is probably just turn this off. So here's an in-mail template and it's got a, a name, a subject line and a message. The only difference is a subject line, of course. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm not gonna use the in-mails for this initial demo, just to make things a little bit more simple. Let's go to the next step, which should be scheduling. All right, so I really like at the top how it's kind of layering everything I've already done so I can see exactly what is going on. There's no mystery in my mind who I'm targeting, what my audience size is, the campaign flow that I chose. If I labeled this, it would be even more helpful. And then what step I'm currently on is the campaign schedule. I've got time zone. I can actually have it inside of the target's time zone so that they're more likely to be online when the initial message is sent. And then I can set it during work hours. So right now it's set to be between nine and nine, which is probably fine. It's gonna apply to all days. Yeah, I'm good with that schedule, but of course you could dial it into whatever you like. Maybe I'll turn off Saturdays and Sundays. 
And let's go to the next step, which should be the final review. All right, so here we are with the final review. I've already been reviewing it the entire time, so I'm feeling pretty confident about this. I can see my target size, my campaign flow, my schedule, everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. The next message asked me if I wanna start the campaign, so let's go ahead and get it rolling. So now tomorrow it should begin sending these outreach messages and I can view the progress. So overall on this screen here, I'll see how many leads I gained, how many interactions were accomplished and the campaign progress overall. It should automatically send out the right number of messages to not get you banned. It's gonna keep track of those in order to you know, keep you within those safe limits. I'll be able to see the number of profile views, the number of invites, how many were accepted, the number of messages that I've sent and the number of replies I have received. Down below here, I can see the overall connection flow, how many leads I got, how many invites were sent, the reply rate and the acceptance rate. So all of this data is over here where it says campaigns. You can see a list of your campaigns and then drill into it to get those analytics. The next option down is for your leads. Any of your leads that come in through the campaigns will be visible right here. I'm gonna show you some B-roll footage at the moment since I don't have any leads. So you can see what this screen will look like after it's fully populated. Same thing for the inbox. The inbox is the next option down. This is where you can actually communicate with other users on the platform. So you don't have to go out to LinkedIn. You never actually need to open up LinkedIn if you don't want to. Everything should show up right here. Then there is a dedicated section for your templates. You can create new templates here. So if you wanna do your notes, your messages, or your in-mail templates, you can do it outside of building out the actual campaign. It's a really nice option because then you can get everything ready to go. And then when you're building your campaigns, you just focus on the audience, the targeting, and setting up the A-B testing, you'll be ready to fly. I don't know, is anyone else out there like that? I do that for email marketing as well. When I'm creating a drip sequence for a client, I like to write all of the emails outside of the actual tool. And if I can get them loaded in ahead of time so that it's just paste or select the right template, it makes things a lot easier. You don't have that context switching where you're thinking about, oh, I need to write a creative message. And then I need to technically set up the right schedule and order for the messages. So I think that's cool that they kind of have a nice little nook here where you can create your email messages or your, your in-mail messages. The next option down is your LinkedIn accounts. So you can manage all of your LinkedIn accounts right here. And if you wanna add clients, you can do so right up here by adding a new workspace. You get the same number of workspaces as you do LinkedIn accounts. So you could group them together if you've got multiple clients from the same company, or you could have a dedicated workspace for every single account. And finally, under workspace settings, there is a blacklist option. This is where you can go to actually set up accounts that you never want to contact. So just go to blacklist, hit add account, then you can either upload a CSV file or search for an account right here. So let's say I never wanna do outreach to Russell Brunson. I can just look up his account, select it right here, and then he is blacklisted. I will never include him in any of my campaigns, even if he is the perfect target. All right, so that is AIMFOX. We already looked at the plans and pricing, so there's not a whole lot more to say about it. Just choose a plan that fits with the right number of users or workspaces that you need, and you'll be ready to go. I definitely would recommend this tool. I think it is very highly effective, and if you're doing any LinkedIn outreach at all, why pay for it monthly when you can get it for a one-time cost? So I'm gonna go ahead and give AIMFOX a 7.8. Now, a lot of people ask about my scoring system, saying it might be maybe a little confusing or hard to understand. Well, let me clue you in on one thing. A tool like AIMFOX is basically never going to be in the eights or nines because those are going to be tools that are absolute slam dunks and will have wide mainstream appeal. But the truth of the matter is that not everybody does cold outreach, nor should they. The internet has enough spam to begin with. All right, so if you wanna grab a copy of AIMFOX, my link is down below in the description. Clicking on that helps me make these daily LTD reviews. We've got Black Friday coming up. Things are gearing up. The plans are getting ready. If you have any questions about Black Friday deals, let me know ahead of time. What are you curious about? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Otherwise, head over to clientamp.com, get signed up for the free email newsletter. My name is Dave Swift. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.